A forward rate agreement is an agreement to borrow or lend in the future, but without investing principal. A forward rate agreement is an over-the-counter contract between two counterparties that is settled in cash. And it's really a forward start loan, but where neither of the counterparties is really lending any principal. Instead, there is a reference to the notional amount, and that's pretty typical in derivatives contracts. So this is Hull's, John Hull's example 4.3. And so the first assumption is for a forward rate agreement, the notional amount on the contract is 100 million. So it's not principal invested, but rather just the notional amount that is referenced. And so this contract also needs to specify what the fixed rate of interest is. And here the assumption is that the contract specifies a fixed rate of 4%. And that means both the seller and the buyer of the contract are locking in that rate. One is a lender, one is a borrower. There also needs to be a time frame associated with this forward rate agreement. And in this case, it happens to be a forward rate agreement that begins in three years and covers a period for the interest of only three months. And so you, the notation that can be used here is forward rate agreement. So we could say F or we could say FRA. And it begins in three years and covers and the interest applies to a three month period. So you can see three plus 0.25 years or three months could be denoted this way. And again, the seller is really locking in the fixed lending rate of 4% and the counterparty who's the buyer is really locking in the fixed borrowing rate of 4%. So we have here an illustration. This is the example that John Hull shows in his calculations anyway. Here we have an illustration that would be from the perspective of the seller who again is wanting to lock in a fixed lending rate. And so there are really two key dates on the timeline that's moving vertically. We have the trade date, that would be today, the two counterparties into the contract, and actually nothing happens. There's a waiting period for three years until we get to the maturity of the contract or the settlement on the contract. And at that point in time, at the end of three years, there is a comparison to the prevailing interest rate, which is obviously not known at the beginning. That's why I have this in yellow, because John Hull happens to il and illustrate a scenario where it looks like the interest rate increased and is up to 4.5%. So at this point in time, there is just a comparison to the prevailing, in this case, three-month LIBOR, to the fixed rate that has always applied to the contract. And so I'll show the, do, just, I'll just do the calculation here. This, from the perspective of this seller, taking the fixed rate of 4%, subtracting whatever the then prevailing three-month LIBOR is, that gets multiplied by the notional amount However, it's just three months, it's not a full year, so we're taking 3.25 minus three to determine what is a negative 125,000. So from the perspective of the seller on this fixed rate notional, there is a payment, a cash outflow. The seller is paying to its counterparty, who is the buyer on the fixed rate agreement, $125,000, and that's because the under this seller was trying to lock in a fixed lending rate on the underlying exposure the interest rate moved in its favor let's just consider the scenario scenario that john hold doesn't show let's say the interest rate goes down to three and a half percent then this seller who was trying to lock in the fixed lending rate they're now in a market where their loans are making less however the fixed rate agreement is acting as a hedge and you can see here, the payment here is now a positive 125,000 to the seller, and it's the buyer, their counterparty, who is paying them. And the only difference here, the only additional tweak is here, this settlement could wait till the end of the 3.25 years, or because this is settlement date, it actually makes sense to simply take that payment 
and then present value it, you can see here, to present value it from 3.25 years to three years. So it's just a normal discounted discounting. And you can see that amount is slightly less. In this case, 123,916. And we could put this another way and say that the seller of this forward rate agreement was protected when interest rates declined, just like the buyer of this forward rate agreement is protected when interest rates increase. Okay, so if you'd like to stay with me, then I'll do one more, a little more detailed example from John Hull. But now the difference is, instead of just computing the cash flow, it's a valuation of the contract from one of the counterparties' perspective. So what is the really the net present value of this contract? And you can see here is the assumption. Suppose that the forward LIBOR rate for the period between the time 1.5 years and the time two years in the future is 5% with semi-annual compounding. Okay, so what that means is, the problem just assumes that we are midstream in the contract. The contract was in, the forward rate agreement contract was initiated in the past. We don't actually know the, de, the date and don't need to know. And here we are midstream in the contract. And we just know that the contract is going to settle in two years or really in one and a half years, it's going to settle and covers a six month period. And so how do we value it? Well, we use the forward rate that is implied by zero rates to, to estimate what is the most likely future spot rate. And so the question is just telling us that we've already looked at the zero rates. I backed these out. You can pull the spreadsheet down if you want to see. And the forward rate is 5%. That's our estimate of what the future interest rate will be. Okay, so continuing with the assumption, and it's, the question is telling us that, and that some time ago, as a company, we entered into this agreement well, where we will receive the 5.8% with semi-annual compounding and pay LIBOR on the principal of $100 million for the period. So that's a notional of $100 million, really. And you can see here it's telling us that the forward rate agreement, the interest rate on the agreement, the fixed rate is 5.8%. Okay, so... Here we are at time zero. The forward rate of 5% is the estimate of the future spot rate. The contract is, is fixed at 5.8%. That's what we entered into. And so if we're valuing this contract, we know we're going to receive the fixed 5.8. We just don't know what we're going to pay on the on the floating rate or the future spot rate, really. And we're estimating that it's 5% and that's less. So you can see 5.8 minus 5. So we're actually, at this point in time, predicting that we're going to be receiving a cash payment, that we're the one receiving and our counterparty is paying because the fixed rate that we're receiving is higher than what the implied forward rate currently is. And so that difference in rates multiplied by the notional, and again, multiplied by the period covered by the forward rate agreement, which here is, again, it's not a full year, but only six months. Okay, that multiplies out to an, uh, 400,000. Again, as the estimate of the future settlement on this contract, but that's two years in the future. And so the only final step is to discount that to the present value as usual. And we're using the risk-free rate assumption that is given to us separately. After, after all, it's not really the same as these rates of 4%. So we're discounting continuously at 4% over two years. And that gets us a present value, a positive present value of 369000 and change. Again, a positive present value because... At least at this point, knowing that we're going to be receiving a fixed rate of 5.8 and then estimating or predicting that we're going to be paying a lower rate of 5% means that we're expecting a cash inflow and therefore a positive present value. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you.